everyone, and thank you for joining us here today for the webinar entitled Best Practices for Hourly Employment Recruitment in Alberta. It's brought to you by the Retail Council of Canada and Minefield Group. Uh, thanks to everyone for joining us on the call. And I'd like to start by making some quick introductions before we get going. My name is Shafiq Jamal. I'm the Vice President for Western Canada for the Retail Council of Canada. And uh, we're here today with uh, Mindful Group, who I will introduce formally in a minute. Uh, but before I do that, uh, for those who may or may not know, Retail Council of Canada is an industry association that's known as the Voice for Retail. And we've been in existence since 1963. We represent retailers coast to coast, and we say 45,000 storefronts across the country, from independent store owners to mid to large retailers uh, alike. Uh, we uh, represent retailers' interests in front of government, uh, the media. We put on events like this webinar that you're going to be listening to today. And we also provide um, communication support and, and put together tools and resources and guides for retailers across the country. Uh, I wanted to take a minute to tell you a little bit about what we call the Alberta Labor Supply Task Force, which is a community of interest that Retail Council of Canada has put together. And if you aren't already uh, connected to uh, the Alberta Labor Supply Task Force, I'd encourage you to get connected with myself, Shafik Jamal. And, uh, uh, my email is sjamal at retailcouncil.org, and you can find my information at www.retailcouncil.org. So the Alberta Labor Supply Task Force is bringing together senior retail HR executives, as well as those who are involved in the HR function in Alberta, to discuss issues around recruitment, retention, retail training, education, compensation and benefits, and other related interests. And the task force, the mission of the task force is to, to bring together the retailers to help share and understand some of the opportunities and challenges that lie in the Alberta market, as well as to help Retail Council of Canada uh, make representations in front of the Alberta government in terms of what we'd like to see the Alberta government do to help retailers address the issues of labor supply challenges. So um, if, uh, like I say, I encourage you to become part of this group. Uh, it's a community of interest that's meeting on a regular basis right now, uh, probably once a month. And it's actually through um, the, the generous support of uh, Minefield Group and their linkage back to our RCC and the Alberta Labor Supply Task Force that we're offering you this uh, webinar here today. So I'd like to introduce our guest uh, speaker. Um, his name is Cameron Laker, who is the president and founder and CEO of the Minefield Group and is a member of the Entrepreneurs Organization as well. Uh, Minefield Group is a, is a clear thought leader in this space. They were ranked eighth fastest growing company in Canada in 2009 by Profit Magazine in its annual Hot 50 ranking. And Cameron and his team, uh, Cameron is recognized as an expert in how retailers leverage technology, process, and social media to recruit talent. Over the past four years, Cameron and his team have developed and implemented recruitment strategies and programs for well over 40 retailers. And Minefield is helping clients reinvent their approach to talent acquisition. In 2011, on behalf of their clients, Minefield Group processed over 500,000 job applicants, phone screened over 100,000 of those, and drove the hiring of 12,000 people in Canada for multiple clients. Minefield has seen substantial growth in the last 12 months due to the changing labor market and the ongoing challenge facing retailers of finding, hiring, and retaining great people. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Cameron Laker. Thanks, Shavik. Um, so to start off with here, uh, a little bit of the housekeeping before we pop into a few things. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with GoToMeeting or GoToWebinar, in the control panel in the top right, there's the red arrow. And if uh, the red arrow will minimize the control panel so you can see the full screen. But also, as we go through the session, um, if, you, if you have any questions, and we encourage you to um, open up that control panel through the red arrow, and you'll see a question section. So we'll be collecting questions throughout the webinar. Please, um, please type them in there, and we'll be able to take those questions, and we will be able to answer them as many as we possibly can towards the end of the webinar. 
we're hoping today for us to be um, completed in about 45 minutes, so we've got a good 10 to 15 minutes uh, available for Q&A. So with that being said, um, if, uh, again, if you've got any questions, the question panel there, and just hit the red arrow to minimize the uh, control panel. So to hop right into it, um, Chapa gave us a bit of an intro uh, on, on, on ourselves. What we do is, is we provide a, an integrated recruiting service for hourly employers that really leverages people, which is our recruitment team, uh, process, and finally technology. And essentially, uh, what we provide for our clients is we source, screen, score, schedule, and shortlist applicants for their hiring managers that really streamline the process and help improve the quality of hire while saving the manager valuable time. And a little bit that goes into what we provide in our integrated service includes branded career sites, candidate sourcing, applicant tracking, phone screening, assessments, uh, interview scheduling. Uh, we've also got a partnership with BackCheck, so we administer the BackCheck's on behalf of our clients and finally social recruiting. So a lot of what we've got here today is based on a little bit about the company. So Shavik mentioned a few things. Um, we've got 40 plus employees. We're currently working with an either uh, an ongoing or project basis with about 50, uh, 50 retailers across Canada. We've got experience in grocery, apparel, automotive, specialty, wireless, food, big box, and also franchised organizations. Uh, we, we did do about 12,000 hires last year. We've done about 25,000 over the past three years. And uh, we've helped our clients go and build a database, a collective database of about 750,000 people which they own. And uh, finally, we're fully, fully bilingual. So the agenda here for today, um, it's going to be very data driven. So I'm going to try to refrain from any subjective or, or opinionated perspectives here. Uh, but really trying to use the data. And what we're going to go through is look at what's happening as far as online activity goes, as far as job postings in Alberta. Um, some of the activity and trends that we're seeing from the companies that are doing the most job postings online in Alberta. Going through uh, the usage of the job boards. Um, then touching on a little bit of the social media component. So um, who's doing what at what degree. And uh, well, we've got some live examples there. And then finally, a best practices review. So as we go through this, I will be getting out of the, the boring PowerPoint and onto some live sites and using some examples of some, some retailers who are doing a phenomenal job of, of applying best practices. So the data and research, we use a tool called Wanted Analytics. And Wanted Analytics is a business uh, intelligence tool for job boards and staffing firms. And what it, what it does is it basically aggregates online job postings and it segments it by category, by location, and also by um, employer. So this is where a lot of the data comes from. Now with any BI tool and any kind of a scraping tool like this, it's never perfect. So there's a few areas here that I'll, that I'll touch on, but, but I would, um, uh, the accuracy in the data is, is quite good. Uh, it only represents job postings. So a company may have a, a ton of job postings on their corporate site, but this is really um, about distribution of these jobs onto the major job boards. So I should just mention that as it's really about external sources. All the data that I'm going to show you here today is taken from the last 120 days, and it's the last 120 days for a Monday. Um, and really focusing in on the 40 uh, retailers in Alberta, or 40 retailers who are doing the most activity in Alberta and looking at some of their data. And then finally, um, the research that we've generated, which you'll see in the back half around use of technology and use of social media, is, was generated internally through a review and actually going on each of the 40 company sites reviewing how they're set up and what they're doing. So um, again, very objective in, in the data set here. So I'm going to pop in, but some of the initial findings that we found, um, number one being standalone career sites are actually very well adopted um, by the, the 40, 40 companies doing the most activity in Alberta. In fact, 47 of which, 47% of these um, or approximately just short of 20, uh, have a unique career site. So they've built out a unique employment brand experience that's separate from their corporate site. The other thing that we saw is social media is still, uh, the use of it is still extremely limited. And, and we'll talk about that as well as how people are using Twitter and, uh, and Facebook and use some examples. The other thing that we found through the data was there is a, um, for the majority of companies, there was a high reliance on a lot of the time only one, but one to two major job boards. 
And what we'll talk about here today and some of the best practices is about multi-channel and, 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 and distributing your jobs to a variety of different places. And then the final piece here is looking at LinkedIn. And um, from an advertising perspective, what we found is LinkedIn is not well adopted as an advertising platform. It is well adopted, I believe, for the, the retailers who have got recruiters and sourcers who are going and digging and finding retail store managers. But in fact, I'll show you some data that LinkedIn is really not well adopted at this point amongst the, the 40 largest. So here is a list of the 40, uh, 40 companies. And I did include a couple of, of non-retailers in here but who are hiring hourly staff. You'll see McDonald's in here, um, Subway. Uh, but what this is, is this is the number of job postings that have been put online. And these are single postings, keep in mind. So this isn't multiple postings going from top to bottom, from 1 through to 40. So these are the number of unique postings on job boards over the last 120 days. And um, I'll give everyone kind of a chance to have a look here because everyone always wants to find their company. Um, you'll see a couple of the companies on here which are really brands of a larger uh, organization such as you know, Canadian Tire. There's a couple of their brands in here with um, FGL and also um, Mark's Work Warehouse. But looking at the list of, of jobs here, you can see uh, Walmart leading the way with 2,100 plus um, individual job posts in the last 120 days. And I should mention, this is strictly for Alberta. So this is any city or anything happening in Alberta. This is what the, the summary of it is. So this group of, of companies here is what's being used for the data that we'll be showing later on in the presentation. And I'm sure everyone's going to want to get their hands on this. We, um, I should mention that we will be um, recording this webinar, so it will be available post this um, as well. So a couple of things that we found, and this is coming straight out of the BI tool. Um, the number one position, no surprise, uh, in Alberta is retail salespeople. So you can see here in the top left, 617 of the positions were in fact sales roles. And the second largest uh, posting, or the second largest position was in fact, um, well sorry, the largest number of postings was in fact for retail uh, managers. And this comes to no surprise. Uh, retail managers right now and, and finding people with the right skills and qualifications are, are mission critical. And um, what we're finding is obviously more and more companies are trying to pipeline and drive this in. And, it, and the data does show this, that everyone, for the most part, the number one role that's being posted online in the retail space is managers in training, retail store managers, and so forth, um, which leads the way. And then grocery clerks being the third. And a lot of that grocery clerk role is typically to do with the, with the grocery uh, retailers who, who, are, who are very active in Alberta. The other thing that was interesting is we dug into um, the job types was of, of the jobs posted here that could be categorized, that had some kind of a part-time or a full-time or a seasonal tag on it or, or a, a short-term tag, um, full-time led the way. And so, you know, one of the things that we saw and, and we see on a regular basis is because of the volume of full-time positions that are available in the hourly space, it is sometimes difficult to get that um, non-student part-time employee. And you can see that because there, if anyone's seeking full-time, there is absolutely a ton of opportunities for full-time hourly employment. Digging into the locations, um, this was a little bit surprising. Is the, well, the number of the first two uh, points, the top cities, are not surprising at all, being Calgary and Edmonton leading the way. Um, certainly Calgary being the largest by a long shot, followed by Edmonton. And then Red Deer was, um, was a... Was a, was a a city that had a lot of activity as well over the last 120 days. This is likely due to potentially some store openings, but we also find as well that Red Deer is a, is a, is a, is a booming community and um, there's lots of growth happening there. So a bit of a surprise. People maybe would have thought it would have been Fort Mac or, or so forth, but, but Red Deer being the third, um, third largest city that most activity is happening in. From the sectors, and this is heavily based on, if, you, if we go back to the, the main um, the, the list of the top 40, uh, what we've got is, is you've got Home Depot very high there and that's a big reason why um, building material and supply dealers are the largest sector followed by electronics and appliance stores. This is the best buys in the future shops of the world and also um, grocery stores being the, uh, the third largest. So um, again, not, not a ton of analysis there, but that's, that's really kind of where the, the, 
the highest number of postings from a sector perspective are coming from. So, you know, building materials and supply dealers, the Home Depots, the Ronas of the world, followed by the Best Buys and the wireless waves and so forth. And then finally with the grocery stores, Save on Foods, Safeway, um, blah, blah. So now to dig into the job boards. Now I, I want to uh, preface this slightly. So this this is the this is the aggregation of the number of job postings on each of the the kind of national free niche and local job boards over the past 120 days. Um, the the site with the most postings is Working.com, uh, followed by Workopolis and then Regional Help Wanted or Job Shop. And um, then we get into the free, and this is where the data gets a little a little messy, and I'll speak to this here. Um, you got HRDC, which is Job Bank. Now, one of the things that struck me is is with Job Bank being as low as it is, with only 644 retail postings, a couple things come to mind. One of which being the roles may be um, uh, when being when they're being posted on here, they might be miscategorized. Um, so people are posting these jobs possibly in sales or customer service versus retail. And the other thing that was interesting here was, um, first of all, everyone's going to say, well, where's Kijiji? Because I know Alberta, um, people who are recruiting in Alberta, Kijiji is a great source. And Kijiji is not defined as a job board from this sense, but we do know that Kijiji is heavily, heavily used. We heavily use it, and it's a great source of candidates. And then finally, Craigslist, obviously three postings is not accurate. And again, this comes down to how the jobs are being categorized. So. Unfortunately, we don't have the count for Kijiji and Craigslist. Um, it would take us <laughs> um, a year to count all this stuff up, but um, essentially the free ones being HRDC, Best Jobs Canada, Craigslist and Kijiji, I'm sure, are on there, and then looking at the national job board. So I should mention as well, this is, this is categorizing retail type roles. So um, there could be roles that retailers are posting in, um, you know, for example, a sales category versus a retail category. So this is taking from these these retail categories, and then you can see some of the the niche boards, um, and then you can see some of the local boards as well. So BCJobs.ca, Manitoba Jobs, and I guess there could have been some jobs miscategorized on there as well. So that gives a bit of a highlight. But the biggest one for me was really the HRDC. This is a free job board which we know drives a ton of traffic, and and my my gut says is the reason why this is being low this is so low is the fact that it is very difficult to post there is no automation allowed to go and, to go and drive your jobs into job bank on a regular basis so every single posting needs to be posted and then you look at some of the national ones who have set themselves up with job scraping or automatic posting um, which can obviously that's what drives up their numbers because every single post is going on there in some kind of an unlimited or 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 high volume job posting package so this is, again, looking at all industries. So I wanted to give you a, a perspective on where do retailers fit in, in, in all the companies who are recruiting right now in Alberta. And uh, probably not a huge surprise to people, but Alberta Health Services being the largest poster by almost double, over double. Um, there are five, five uh, retailers who hit the top uh, 20 list here, 25 list, being Walmart, Home Depot, Save on Foods, Sears Canada, and Sobeys. And you can see here the volume that they're posting. There's obviously no surprise. There's some banks on there, engineering and oil and gas and so forth. Um, so just to give you a perspective on the volume that's happening right now, um, you know, five of uh, five retailers were able to get into that top 25 list from a, from a postings perspective. So when we looked at this data, we wanted to make sure that we spent some time going, okay, so now we've established who, who are the most active uh, online uh, over the past 120 days, and then really wanted to dig into what they were doing, what technology were they using, how are they using social media. So digging a little bit farther beyond just what the, 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 the BI we did here around job posting, but really kind of digging into who's doing what based on a set of best practices. Now, Best practices can be debated, but there's a few areas and a few things that we've seen that really drive best practice. One thing being microsites and career sites. So this idea of building out these microsites to, to maybe target a, a specific demographic or maybe a specific role. And then also career sites that are really um, you know, fully built out career sites that are, have only got employment branding content. And we've seen this as best practice. And because of the competition that exists in Alberta, it's becoming increasingly important to really go the same way a marketer would, is to target your content to those different audiences. So we're seeing an increase there, and we'll dig into that a, a bit here coming up. 
The next piece that, that we, we dug into from a best practice is talent network sign up. Um, now this is defined many different ways by a variety of, of, of employers, but talent network sign up could be the ability for a candidate to hit your site and to register for uh, job alerts or to sign up for job information or to register with you without applying to a job. We've seen this consistently, um, and we know this is best practice because we see the volume coming through in, in our Alberta activity that um, candidates are, are very, very open to joining these networks and registering with you without applying for a job, especially when it's communicated effectively. And I'm going to give some examples of all of these here shortly. Twitter usage. So we, we're going to go in and dive in on who's using Twitter from a corporate perspective, um, who's using Twitter just to post jobs, and then who's using Twitter to actually push out employment brand content. We've got some breakdown of that as well. Facebook page usage. So you know, there's obviously a ton of talk about this, but we dug in here and really looked at um, which percentage of companies have a corporate Facebook page, which percentage of companies have a uh, corporate Facebook page with job content on it, and then how many companies actually have a standalone Facebook page that's really dedicated strictly to the employment branding um, strategy. And then finally going into some LinkedIn stats, uh, and then, and then we'll, we'll drive into the, the conclusions here again at the end. So first off, when we looked at the 40 companies, uh, we found that 47% of them had a standalone career site. So the way we define this is, is if you went to a corporate site and you clicked on careers and, and within that page there was embedded either the applicant tracking system and so forth, it was kind of a standalone one or two page site within the corporate site. So 53% of uh, companies either did not have any kind of a career site, um, but for the most part, that 53% 53, 53 represents companies that are kind of, um, their, their site is really embedded within the corporate site, whereas 47% of companies have built out a unique career site to really go specifically talk to the employment brand and give the candidate and the job seeker a unique experience. So, this is being tremendously well adopted and the big trend that we're seeing here is not only to go and build a standalone career site but to build up micro sites. So almost a landing page type approach where your content can be very, very targeted at specific groups. This could be for, um, for the grocery industry, it could be a pharmacy technician micro site. Um, for uh, you know, another retailer could be really dedicated to managers and training if you're trying to recruit people into your managers and training program. So we're seeing this trend start to grow and quite frankly, I was, I was really surprised to see this number as high as it was. Um, and, and I believe in a year from now, we'll, we'll see this number creep up and grow as well. I will say though, there was only about um, one or two companies that did not have any kind of a career set out of those top 40 where you could only really kind of apply by email. So no list of open jobs, no way to register and so forth. So some of the examples I want to pop in here now, and uh, hopefully these links work the way they should. Um, we're going to pop into the, uh, the Walmart site here to start off with, them being the largest. Um, so this is an example here. You can see their URL is careers.walmart. Really um, totally dedicated to this um, this this career or, or employment branding site. So, you know, the ability to go in and dig into career areas, to see different areas, um, search jobs and apply. You see they've got their 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 social media content up here. So you've got Facebook, Walmart Careers, you've got their YouTube channel, you've got Walmart Careers as a Twitter page, and then also their LinkedIn careers page. Now this I should mention is is US based obviously and um, so but this is a great example of a company that's got a, a, a setup here as far as uh, a really specific site that speaks to this group. And as you dig in, for example, you go into the stores, really drives management careers, hourly careers, so it segments those two out and then it goes into specific content um, uh, to speak to that individual. So I'll click out of here and um, we'll go back here and, and the Home Depot is another one here I wanted to show. And again, same, same URL string, so careers.homedepot. Um, you can see here that they've got, obviously, again, a fully built out site, very different from their corporate site that's really driving. Uh, and we use the two largest employers because they're doing the highest, the highest number of, of, sorry, largest employers from a job posting volume perspective. But again, there seems to be some consistency, right? So picking around job type, you know, in-store, distribution center, corporate, 
talking about the culture and we're seeing this continue as far as best practices. So um, you can see here they've got some specific content around, uh, around specific uh, categories of jobs and opportunities and, and types of people as well. And then finally we've got Rona as well. Um, so Rona obviously being a Canadian company, um, you can see they've got here again really you know, there's some consistency here we're starting to see, really driving out and, and, and looking at the different stores, uh, store level jobs, distribution centers, the office, a little bit around working um, at Rona, and then going in and really targeting the content. And as you go in, for example, um, to the, the stores, you know, you've got some content in here really specifically geared towards that group. So we're seeing this happen more and more, and obviously it's a well, um, it's a well adopted uh, a well-adopted strategy because of 47% of these companies are currently doing this. So this is what we mean and some, these are some great examples where um, there's a lot of content on here but what's important about how these companies have built these sites out is they're really gearing the content towards um, specific types of applicants and the type of job that they're looking for. So going into talent networks, and to define this, this is really about um, the ability for an applicant to come to your site and uh, either simply sign up via email, uh, register in some type of way with you without applying for a job. And when we looked at the data, we had 28% of companies were really kind of pushing this talent network sign up, um, register with us to hear about job opportunities. 30% of the companies um, had some kind of uh, a candidate registration, so you could register, uh, and likely through the applicant tracking system, but register with that company without actually applying for a job. And this is some, you know, again, best practices and talent pooling for, for specific regions and specific jobs. You've got 37%, and this is what really kind of surprised me, is you've got 37% plus the 5%, so 42% of companies really only allowed applicants to engage with their company um, through applying for a job. And I think this is a huge, hugely missed opportunity. And as we dig into the data, really 58% of companies are set up to allow for candidates to sign up or register without applying for a job. Now, the use of applicant tracking system um, and the adoption of applicant tracking systems amongst this group was very, very high. Um, so you know, 95% of companies had an applicant tracking system in place or some kind of candidate management software to allow them to manage the applicant flow for their jobs. Um, a couple companies had email only, which obviously, um, you know, the world of spreadsheets and Outlook is, is, is how, they're, how they're managing recruitment right now. Um, but I really found this was a huge miss because what, what we've seen in, in any applicant tracking system that, that you're going to put in place, and some are better than others, obviously, but really when you look at from an ATS or an applicant tracking uh, system perspective, they've all got that functionality to allow for um, simple registrations or sign-ups. And I really do encourage you, if you're on this call and you don't have this component, if you've got an applicant tracking system in place and you don't have this ability for candidates to simply register or sign up with you, that is functionality that the high majority of applicant tracking systems have. So we found this was very unique. And, Again, 58% of companies are, are, are understanding that candidates are going to hit their site, they may not find a job opportunity, and they're communicating clearly to them, you know, here's how to go and sign up. So a couple of examples, I'll pop on to um, the uh, Save on Foods Jobs site here first. And what you've got here is this is their apply functionality, so jobs, but, you know, really clear language here around, um, you know, signing up and, and, and joining our community and we'll let you know when job opportunities come up. So that's a pretty simple example. Um, <clears throat> so that's one example where it's the apply functionality again, just apply with us, join our community. And then when we pop into the um, Best Buy site, Best Buy has recently um, rebuilt, I think in the last year or so, um, this is their career alert section. So they've built a bit of a homebrew system here that allows for people to simply type in their email address. So I'll do, um, I'll do mine. So you, know, you sign up with Best Buy and then you can start then choosing the types of job alerts. So this is again really good, good from a best practice perspective. So you know, sign up for any kind of jobs within what divisions you're looking at, the categories, and again, 
most applicant tracking systems, if you get into the system admin, you've got the ability to go and create this. So uh, maybe not exactly the way this is done, but I think they've done a great job here. And they've also really pushed it out, right? So this is a part of their navigation. This is something that they, it's core to their, their talent pooling strategy is, you know, hit our site, sign up, and then we're going to drive content at you that really kind of fits your want and need based on location, based on job types, and so forth. It's a great example here of how Best Buy has done that, and um, absolutely is best practice. So as we keep moving through here now, we pop into Twitter. And what we found, and this probably isn't a huge surprise, because retailers, um, you know, with, a, with going direct to consumer, it's, it's critical to have some kind of a Twitter presence. But of the 40 companies that we looked at, 91% um, of them had a corporate Twitter account. But then when we dug into who was actually going and, and, and using Twitter and, and creating a Twitter channel or a Twitter handle or a page that really speaks strictly to employment content, um, we found that 37% of those companies are using Twitter as an employment branding vehicle. 63% uh, of the companies had no employment focus whatsoever, so they didn't have a Twitter page, even at the simplest level of just simply posting jobs. So that seems to be pretty well um, adopted as well. This is something that if we went back a year ago, I, my, my, my gut says is it'd be about half of that. So 37% of companies have really kind of built out either one or multiple we have seen um, we've seen you know, a couple of the companies within this data set actually built out specifically Alberta-based Twitter, Twitter channels. So you know, that's, that's, a, that's a really good practice, I believe, because then you know when people are following, um, following that page, um, there's really specific content. And you know, an Alberta-based Twitter channel makes a lot of sense. So a couple of the examples we wanted to pop into is first being Lululemon, and we found that they did a phenomenal job, and obviously everybody, you know, they've got a phenomenal brand, but this is an example of a, a, a Twitter page that is strictly based around people, um, and it's also based around predominantly content, and as you go in, they've got 3,000 followers on here. As we dig into this, there's a lot of interaction. There's a lot of photos that are being posted. Um, you can see you're making tweet love from the people department at our central store, um, I think it's central store operations. Um, and what's great about this is you're not seeing a list of job after job after job. Is you're seeing some content, um, who you know maybe some some messages around who they're trying to go and hire, um, but really a lot of interaction. Um, so I think this is just uh, absolutely a fantastic um, fantastic use of this because they're really taking their culture and they're tra translating their culture into um, tweets, which really help people understand the business. Um, but again really clearly driving them right back to their career site. So the other example I'll pop in, and this is uh, Caltire Careers. So again, um, some focus on uh, employment branding content, resume tips, uh, you know, not just posting a job, but really actually going and, and talking about what's interesting about an opportunity and so forth. So another good example here of, of how a, a careers focused channel um, has been built out. And then finally, the darling of the employment branding uh, uh, retail world here, uh, Starbucks. Whoops, Just give me one second here. So here's the Starbucks jobs, and they've got 36,000. Again, this is not only, this is, this is global, so keep that in mind. This isn't just Alberta. Um, but you can see here, again, it's, there's, some, there's some postings about um, a job opportunity for a specific role. Uh, there's interaction between candidates and employees around uh, what we're looking for. Um, you know, here's, hi, yes, we have entry-level roles. If you're interested, check out our school if we're recruiting there. So another great example on how a company is, is leveraging this. And you can see it's starting to grow, right? So we're, when we're finding on Twitter, there's more and more companies that are starting to create these career-focused Twitter channels. And I think what we've seen is the evolution from, let's just post all of our jobs on Twitter. Uh, and the problem with that is you have tough time, tough time building followers or really giving unique content. Um, whereas companies are really thinking about their content strategy 
And the three examples I just showed are great examples because they're putting out content that's going to be a little bit more engaging than simply a job post. So going through now from a Facebook perspective, so we found that of the 40 uh, top job posting companies, we found that 100% of them had a corporate Facebook page. What blew us away was there was only one company with job content on that corporate page. Um, now we, we you know again we, we might have m missed a, a, a unique or a niche Facebook page. When we went to the main main corporate site and the, the main one assigned, we really found one company with job content. And then five companies have actually built out a standalone employment focused Facebook page. So this was interesting and we dug in in fact that the one company that was doing it very effectively is is you know not necessarily a, 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 a through and through retailer, but it's actually Tim Hortons. And as everybody knows, the timeline and so forth just got changed on Facebook. And here's an example of their page. So um, you can very easily go and uh, apply now, um, corporate opportunities, restaurant opportunities. And again, this is what we're seeing as absolute best practice is make sure that it's not just click here to see our jobs but what's unique and what are the different categories of jobs and then really tailoring that content for that person so the way they've done it you can see this is their corporate site um, there's a lot of stuff on here and then you look at their pages you can see here now their tabs they've got a whole bunch of photos you know uh, what's new roll up the wind some contests and then obviously we've got careers here so that was that tab that we saw and really it wasn't a list of jobs um, and what we've seen is, is companies typically have not been going to this, you know, click on our careers tab or click on our jobs tab and then search our, you know, 2,000 listings. It's really about here's a tab, here's a bit of a landing page and then driving that, that applicant or job seeker to a very specific component of their site. And then what we've got here is we've got found tire careers. So this is an example of a Facebook page that has been completely built around the employment brand. Now, I have to hide my insights there because this is a, one, of our, one of our customers, but you can see here um, it's really about job postings, content, um, stuff that's going on uh, from an interaction perspective, and again, an example of how a company has kind of used this to go and really drive out the employment branding uh, content. And again, the careers tab, very similar to what you saw, is really about um, some high-level content choosing which type of opportunity or even location and then clicking on that link then drives them to a really specific uh, area of their of their career site. So as we go along here and we dig into now LinkedIn, um, this, this was a little bit surprising in a sense of how it was being used. We found that there was 211 uh, jobs and I went Canada wide on this because the data set was too small to simply do it Alberta. So there's 211 uh, retail industry jobs on, um, on LinkedIn that are being posted. 84 of those jobs were store manager. And really, to no surprise, we saw very little to no front line. And the high majority of the jobs posted on LinkedIn were corporate positions. And again, I don't think this comes to any, any major surprise. But when we look at the companies and the number of postings, you can see very, very large uh, retailers aren't really driving a ton of content out. And then if we dig even further into Alberta, you can see here we've got um, Calgary and Edmonton totaling 20 positions. So, you know, what, what conclusions can we draw from this? Well, number one is, is, is I think that, you know, front lines not being used at all uh, on LinkedIn. Now, I should mention, I'm not making the statement that LinkedIn is not being used because I think it's being aggressively used as a sourcing tool to find candidates, message them, um, communicate with them. But as an actual advertising platform, it really hasn't, it really hasn't um, been heavily, heavily leveraged by, by the retail industry, specifically in Canada. Um, so when we look at this, it's obviously, if you think about the types of people on LinkedIn, it's more that retail store manager and corporate level stuff. So I think it's fairly well adopted from a corporate level, but from a frontline perspective, it's not. And for the most part, my belief is, and just through um, just through conversations, is LinkedIn is predominantly being used to go and find and talent pool potential managers for your organization. 
What we did find, though, there were a couple of companies who were doing a very, you know, they, they built out their, their careers page on LinkedIn. And for those of you who, who aren't aware of it, um, LinkedIn, um, can, you know, for a fee, will work with you to go build out some specific uh, content on your LinkedIn page. So I'm going to pop into the Golf Town site. And again, the sites look very similar um, because of the interface. It's not a full-blown site, but it's really a page. And what we've got here is you can see Golf Town. You've got the main overview of the company, but this careers tab. And this is something that LinkedIn can work with you to set up. Talks a little bit about um, their employment brand. Talks about some benefits. It's got some video content in here that you can host on the site. Um, you can see Golf Town here. They've got Join Golf Town again. One of those one of those examples of a, of a retailer that's built out their own career site experience. Jobs that they'd be interested in, and then getting some feedback from from some employees on why it's great to work there. So this is a good example, and and this is we're going to see more and more of this, I believe, over time as LinkedIn continues to grow um, at the pace that they're at. You know, it'll likely maintain its 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 it's used from a corporate level and more from a professional level. But again, you look at the number one job that we're all trying to go and, and, and find right now, and these are retail managers. And uh, for any of you who use LinkedIn on a regular basis, you'll know that there are a ton of retail managers using LinkedIn um, or people with similar skill sets. So LinkedIn, I believe, for the most part, is, is not heavily adopted, I, partly because of the price, and there's a cost, obviously, associated with using it. But it is a phenomenal platform to go and find that, that one job that everyone's trying to go and fill, which is this manager and training, assistant manager, retail store manager, even district manager level. So Sobeys looks very, very similar. They've got a little bit more content. And certainly, you can, you can check it out yourself. I'm just being um, aware of the time here. So finally, looking at recommendations. So what we saw is I think that this idea of building out these standalone sites, but even taking it a step further, if you've got the capability internally and you've got the buy-in through marketing, is really going and building out um, these micro sites and, and, and dedicated career sites that can really tailor the message. And then as we saw, the best practice of a lot of these companies is to make sure that the categories of jobs are very clearly laid out and it's very simple for someone to, to go and check out the types of job opportunities that they're looking for. And obviously that drives an updated list of job opportunities. And the other piece is making sure that all of your all of your, your web content and all of your career sites and so forth have the ability um, for candidates to go and sign up with you. And we call it talent network sign up or talent community, but basically registering without applying for a job. So you can start to build that pipeline. If you do this, you will absolutely see your conversion rates go up. So what I mean by that is the number of visitors that are hitting your career site, the ones that are actually giving you some information. So you're only going to get typically, you know, eight to twelve percent of career site visitors uh, converting with you. And when I say converting, they give you a piece of information. Um, you will see this number jump if you go and, and you will convert more people if you make this career alert like Best Buy did, um, talent network sign up function, register with us to hear about job opportunities you'll start to see your conversions go up, which at the end of the day only increases your ROI on your advertising spend. And if you're gonna spend, if you're gonna spend X number of dollars on driving people to your career site, you wanna make sure your career site is well optimized to go and, and capture some information so you can start building some kind of a relationship with that candidate. The other piece is the multi-channel sourcing. And you know, when we looked at the job boards that are being heavily used and the companies that are doing the most postings, uh, what we did find is the high majority of those 40 companies were really using one to two job boards. Uh, there wasn't a lot of multi-distribution. Now, what we did find is some of these companies are doing a great job with one or two job boards. They've got a great Twitter page. They've got some Facebook activity going. And then they've also got you know the talent network sign up and so forth. But I do think that it's important that when you look at your, your channel and how you're going to distribute your jobs, making sure you're distributing them from a social perspective, but also making sure that you've got a good mix of free and paid job boards. And again, uh, sites like Craigslist, Kijiji, and JobBank are, are great. I know they take time to post on, but they can generate some great results for you for, for the only cost being time. And then you've got some of the major job boards where the majority of the content is being located right now. 
And then finally, social media. So there's a kind of a basic and advanced level. Um, my, my belief here from a basic perspective to really get moving on this is, you, know, you look at the Starbucks and, and Caltire and, and, um, and the Walmarts of the world, they've got really more of an advanced strategy. They've got people who are, who are man managing these channels and managing this interaction. Um, but from a basic level, you know, anyone can pop up a Twitter page and, and begin posting out jobs to it, for example. And although it's not necessarily the best practice, it's certainly a start and it helps get more distribution there for you. Uh, and then with the Facebook component, is I wouldn't necessarily recommend everyone to just go create a, a, an employment branding focused Facebook page, but um, you know, really sync up and find out how you can incorporate that content into the corporate, corporate page. So in summary, what we've seen again is, is career sites and unique career sites and microsites are very, very well adopted by 47% 40, of those 40 companies. Uh, social media use is still very, very limited. Um, in particular, uh, I was blown away at the lack of integration of employment content on the corporate Facebook page. And as you know, we talked about on the on the panel at the HR conference a couple a couple of weeks back, is working with marketing in a, in, a, in an integrated, planned out way to help leverage um, the fans on those Facebook pages and getting some content on that page. And we just saw that flat out it was it was it was not being well adopted whatsoever. And then finally, multi-channel distribution. So uh, thinking through your distribution channel, and I should mention that there are some very negative effects to completely saturating um, a job board with, with your postings. If the job board has 5,000 postings on it and 2,000 are from one company, um, the job seeker will, it's going to be more and more difficult for them to find unique content. And we do find um, sometimes job boards get into this as they, they they'll you know, have a really large employer who gets an automatic job scrape or an automatic job post. And really what happens is, is that job board gets saturated with a, with, with a specific company or maybe two or three companies' content. And it doesn't provide a great experience for the job seeker, but it does drive a lot of content on the site. So <clears throat> thinking about multi-channel distribution, thinking about that one or two or three paid job boards, thinking about those three to five free sites that you can go use, thinking about how to go and push out through Twitter and, and getting some engagement through Facebook as a landing page type approach. And then finally, um, really making sure that when candidates are hitting your site, you've got a really simple way for them to engage with you if they don't find the perfect position for them. So that kind of summarizes up. I'll pass it back to Shafiq. And um, what I'm going to do here is, uh, Shafiq, I'll let you kind of uh, say a few words. And I'm going to get the questions here all organized, and we'll, we'll start going through them. Excellent. Thanks, Cameron. Uh, thanks to the Minefield Group. Thanks to all the attendees. Uh, I uh, certainly took a lot of notes from your presentation, Cameron. And I think, you know, uh, it's clear that uh, from what you're saying, that a shotgun approach is uh, is not going to work. You know, and I think it's really what I took away. It's about getting sophisticated in how you approach the stra uh, uh, the process, and that you employ a strategy or how are you going to leverage, um, you know, especially the, uh, the new media, if you will. Uh, you know, it looks like you have to focus on uh, interaction. Um, some of the examples you provided, you've got to do visuals. Um, you've got to be fresh in the content and the messages. Um, I also liked how you talked about microsites and the gap between microsites and uh, corporate content. Uh, and I think that uh, there's, there's certainly a need to align uh, those uh, those two facets, and I think I mean you can comment on this, uh, Cameron. But microsites are not. Um, I've done uh, quite a few in my past, uh, given my consulting background. But they're not they're not that difficult to uh, to put up and execute. Um, so I think that that's great. And uh, I'll, I'll, I forgot to mention at the outset, but uh, just a little plug for RCC on LinkedIn. We did uh, we do have an Alberta Labor Supply forum that uh, that's hiving off our Alberta Labor Supply Task Force. So we are we are on LinkedIn, and uh, you should get an invite if you're part of the Alberta Labor Supply Task Force. You will have received an invite, or will be receiving an invite, as this is just happening in real time. Uh, but for those of you who uh, may not be connected to our who want to partake, please do so because that'll be a, a healthy discussion forum that we're going to keep going. Um, back to you, Cameron. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Shafiq. Um, so we've got some questions coming in here. Uh, the first question that came in uh, is around any suggestions to recruit high school students. So 
you know, this, this is an interesting group, right? Because when you think about high school students, um, it, it's, it's funny. We, we've done some research on this around demographic stuff. And what we have found is, is that if you go and these, these individuals, they are going onto job boards. They, they are um, creating some resumes and putting them online. Uh, what we found, though, is they're not spending a lot of time, surprise, surprise, at their desktop. So what this means is their mobile phone, their, their, their iPhone or whatever they've got, or a BlackBerry or an Android phone, um, it's very important that with this group to go and engage them that a lot of your content is mobile friendly. And what that will do is it will help really increase your conversions of candidates that you're reaching out to. So there's a few things. I, I think that when you look at the high school strategy, um, and this is where I think the world of, of, of talent marketing and talent generation is changing, is, is you can't go build a career site that's going to speak to, uh, or even a job posting for that matter, that's going to speak to a high school student as effectively as it would a uh, experienced retail store manager. So if I were approached with this, some of the things off the top of my head from a high school perspective is building out a page, a landing page, or some kind of a mini site to really focus in the language that's going to target in on that generation. Um, I'd also make it very, very mobile friendly, which I think is very important. Um, and finally, I think that if you look at your social content, obviously that age group is more predominantly using Facebook. So um, this may be a great example, depending on the volume, this may be an example of, of you using uh, a really specific focused Facebook page that really focuses in on part-time high school students. And don't be, don't be afraid to go and, and come right out and say, you know, we're targeting, you know, we, we want, we want you know, passionate and s smart high schoolers to join our, join our company in a part-time format. And the other thing that I think will be really effective to recruit high school students because of their use of Facebook. Now, a bit of a, a, bit of a challenge is the majority of it is mobile-based. I know, those, you know they're using Facebook on their mobile phone. They will go use Facebook from a desktop perspective is the advertising platform. So targeting people in specific regions within a specific age group, um, Facebook can really help you kind of um, fast forward and short circuit some campaigning there to go help you build up a bit of a talent community of, of high school students. So um, it's, a tough, it's a tough thing to handle and I think what you need to do is really take a, take a marketer's approach on here's a segment, here's a customer segment that we have to create some unique content for. What I would encourage you to do is, is don't be afraid to go and really speak to that specific group. Um, make it clear and make sure the content is, is, is clearly, clearly targeted at them. So another question that, that came in here, um, any comments on the success or uh, placing offline recruiting in Alberta, window signs, pounding the pavement, referral programs? This is a, this is a great question and um, you know, we've obviously focused a lot of this, this webinar, we've focused all the webinar content on online drivers. Offline drivers are phenomenally um, effective. Now, the good old career fairs are still, still a great way to go and, and recruit people. Window signs, I think, um, are, are still an effective way, but really window signs have evolved from hiring now to um, hiring now, here's our QR code. Um, we've also found there's, there's, a, there's a big adoption happening in the States right now and it's starting to happen in Canada. Uh, not necessarily in the retail space, but um, this text to apply. So allowing individuals to really go text in and use SMS as an application format. And we're seeing that technology evolve um, uh, very, very quickly. So I do think that the offline drivers are absolutely critical. And I think there's a few things you can do is, is the same way you want to convert people from a career site perspective is how do you maximize the conversions in the offline drivers? So not not telling the, the individual the only way to go and apply is to go sit down at the front desk here and fill out a form, but um, having, having a, uh, an SMS keyword that they can go you know, quickly type in you know, jobs at X retailer and um, get a response saying thanks very much and, and we sent you a link. Um, so there's some unique technology about that and this is probably another webinar down the road we can get into, but you know, the career fairs are still a very, very effective format. Referral programs as well. Um, the technology has not really, there's a few pieces of technology out there and there's a few companies that are doing a really effective job of digitizing their employer referral program.
But at the end of the day, it's really going to come down to a store level approach. So the question needs to be is have you really equipped your store managers and your key people at your store to encourage and drive employee referrals? So the window signs are still very, very effective. Um, I know uh, Whole Foods in Canada, for the most part, if you go to one of their kiosks and the one here locally in Vancouver, they've got an actual kiosk with a computer that you, you go and, and, and complete an application for. Now, it's not unique to the in-store. It's really just a, a window into their, their applicant tracking system. But um, I think when you think about QR codes, and you think about text to apply, and you think about ongoing posters and, and the type of content you want to put on there, um, they are phenomenal, phenomenal sources of applicants. The trick is, is getting them from walk-in candidate into your system in a streamlined way that you can give them a similar experience that an online candidate would get through automated workflows and so forth. Okay, I've got another question here. Um, so, uh, does the hourly candidate pool generally have access to computers, internet, and are they computer savvy? Uh, I, I would, you know, we're seeing it right now, absolutely. Um, what we've recently launched is the ability for applicants to apply using their LinkedIn profile or Facebook profile or Google Plus profile, um, and it's mobile friendly. And we, so we've seen, I think anyone in this group, is it's, it's not necessarily computers, internet, but it's mobile friendly. So everyone's used to, to doing the high majority of, of what they used to on their desktop on their mobile phone. So, uh, you know, from a high level perspective, uh, absolutely, the hourly candidate pool is, is absolutely has access to the internet and computers um, and or mobile phones and we find them very computer savvy. I think the mistake that most companies make though is they put steps in the registration and application process that quite frankly are useless. Um, you know, why have a candidate go through five pages of application uh, pages when you probably only need page one, right? So I, I find this happening a lot, and what happens is that dry is drop off. So I think they are savvy, and there's also an expectation that you're making your process user friendly. And if it's not user friendly, they're gone. The, I mean, we're, we're in the world of 140 characters, instant gratification, everything at your fingertips. And if someone's got to spend, you know, 10 minutes filling out basic form questions that they've already provided you on their resume, I think that that's a, that's a huge miss right there. So another question here, um, the, uh, just wondering if there's any way uh, RCC and Mindful Group could get data on their actual success, maybe a survey premise for best practice group is based on volumes that doesn't speak to actual effectiveness. Great point. So to kind of frame that up, I said that very quickly, but you know, what is best practice and what are the results from these practices? What is, what is the average applicant flow? Um, where are the hires coming from? Um, we're talking about data that obviously is, is um, not only difficult to aggregate amongst a group of companies, but I think most companies don't have the answers themselves, um, partly because their technology isn't set up to do that and they're not really measuring it on an active basis. Um, I do think, though, that there is a great opportunity, and, and this is, I guess I could take this bit of a question and a comment, I do think there's an opportunity for, for um, looking at, especially the group that's part of the Alberta Labor Task Force, is to build some data around what is working from a results perspective in a confidential manner. So, Shafiq, maybe that's something you and I can take offline and, and, and put our heads together and, and see if we can provide some of that, you know, beyond just best practice postings, but really best practice results. So, what is driving the results for people? So I think um, I am out of time. Um, we've got a few other questions here that are coming in and unfortunately we won't be able to get to. Um, I just want to thank everyone and Shafiq, maybe I'll ask you to come back on here and just kind of close this off. But thank you very much for, for your time here today. We really do appreciate it. I really hope that some of the data was useful. I know that um, with the participants on the call here today, there was a varying degrees of usage and how things were being done. but. Um, you know, feel free to connect with us as well. Our website's mindfieldgroup.com. You can follow us at Mindfield Group. We've also got a company culture Twitter channel called uh, at MFG underscore minders. Um, that uh, we've got more of our internal culture components and in, 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 uh, tweets there. But thank you very much. I hope you got some value out of it. And uh, I really do appreciate your time. So Shafiq, I'll just pass it over to you for the, the close here. Thank you, Cameron, and uh, yes, thank you so very much uh, to you, Mindfield Group, uh, to the participants. Thank you all for making the time to come on to this call. 
time is such a valuable currency these days, but uh, I hope uh, on behalf of RCC and Minefield that you found this uh, valuable. Uh, I certainly took away a lot of notes, and even though I'm connected to the, uh, to the industry and the sector, um, I definitely want to echo whoever asked the question about uh, data aggregation and best practices. We'll definitely make it part of the Alberta Labor Supply Task Force discussions um, within the group as well as on LinkedIn. Um, Cameron and I will definitely take that away. One of the things, Cameron, that you highlighted that I want to just reinforce with the group is uh, career fairs. Yes, you know, I know that's, that's sort of more the traditional offline, but um, we participated in Canada Career Fair in Edmonton last year, November. Uh, there were about 100 plus companies and only four retailers, and we were one of the four. So yeah. if it echoes and highlights that you have to be out there, it's the largest career fair of its kind in, in Alberta. 11,000 people traditionally pass through the doors on those two days. This year it's in September. Uh, we were an information provider. You have a color coding system at these fairs. Uh, if you're green, you're an information provider. If you're red, you're immediately hiring. And then there's various other levels. But um, it, would, it continued to echo to us as we spoke to high school kids, people in the workforce, mature workers, uh, that uh, there, is, there is a long way to go to help them understand the opportunities that do exist in retail. So I think through everything that Minefield has said here today, plus traditional things like the career fair, I encourage all the participants here to take a really good look uh, and incorporate some of those best practices. And thanks again, um, and uh, have a great rest of your day. Bye for now.